Where is Lisa? I she just loves saw her. With us. I didn't see her come back. Was she in the bathroom or? He should call her Mary. She'll show up quick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, welcome to tonight's study session. The uh, first item on the agenda is a presentation from the police department on police reserve program. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, tonight we were coming in front of you to talk to you about our plans to restart a uh, um, reserve officer program for the city of Casa Grande. And the, and the purpose of that is to supplement and assist our sworn and non-sworn police employees in various duties. We feel that it'll provide professional sworn reserve officers to support both the patrol element and the criminal investigations division. These reserve officers will work part-time on a volunteer basis but yet maintain their certification under the AZ Post standards. Our selection process that we have outlined is we are currently going to only appoint um, Casa Grande police officers who are retired in good standing. We're not going to open it up to outside agencies. We're going to first run it with uh, our own retirees. Since we have so many of them retiring the next couple of years, we're going to evaluate the program on that. And if, if it is successful, then that way, at that time, we can explore bringing in people from outside. Our reasoning behind that, obviously, is the fact that we know these people. We know their work ethic. We know um, the good and the bad about them, the, the strengths and the weaknesses, and they know our system. Uh, their duties and responsibilities are as outlined in our policy. They're required to work 48 hours a calendar quarter, or 192 hours a year for service for the police department. And they have to do quarterly hours. Um, that way we have access to them year round. They would carry out duties assigned to them by our program coordinator, who at this time would be Lieutenant Shervin. They must conform to all our uniform and appearance standards of our department. They're required to meet the training requirements applicable to a full-time sworn officer and these training hours do not count towards their 48 hours that they have to give to the city. And they must maintain their AZ post certification. The compensation is minimal. It's a voluntary assignment. We will provide them with some uniform items as needed. For instance, our first um, one that is interested in this program is currently a sergeant. And there's not going to be a rank structure in our reserve program. So obviously, um, he would need a shirt without rank insignia. Reserves will use the weapons provided them at the time of retirement. The expected costs to the city are very minimal. Uh, reserves will have to qualify annually. So there will be a slight increase in some ammo cost, but it's not like we're going to have 100 reserve officers. Um, it's going to be incremental, and it'll be minimal. And as I stated, a minimal number of uniform items that will be returned to the department any time that they separate or leave the program. I think it's important to note that we're going to continue to evaluate this program quarterly to make sure it fulfills the needs of our department and the city and remains cost effective for everybody. The benefit, just a couple easy benefits to the department and to our city. It's a minimal expense to keep years of experience and knowledge connected with our department and our younger officers. We'll be able to use reserve officers for special events, which would limit the number of current on-duty officers or, or officers we'd be paying overtime to. And they, these reserve officers would be able to assist in tasks that free up current members of our departments and allow them to complete other assignments. For instance, we currently have detectives and professional standards and our, even our PIO that are doing background investigations on new hires for us as well as dispatch. And with the, the amount of people we're losing in the drop, they're very busy doing background investigations. And this would be a perfect job that could be fulfilled by a reserve officer to meet their hours. Um, we have a, a policy um, already created that's a best practice that, that Lieutenant Shervin uh, compiled 
um, that was uh, sent to us through Edwards and, um, used to be Edwards and Ginn, but our, our hired attorneys. And we also had this policy vetted by Brett's office, and he made some suggestions that we tweaked, and we feel that we have a pretty solid uh, or a very solid policy in place. Um, one thing I didn't add is the removal of people from the program. It's not an automatic, just because you retire with us, we're gonna take you, um, and removal of the program. If someone does not fulfill their quarterly hours the first time, um, they will be um, forbidden to work any extra jobs or anything using any of our retired equipment or anything like that, or under the heading of a, of a retired police officer, and if they fail to do it the second time, they're automatically removed from the program. We want to make sure that the benefit for this is two ways, and we're trying to even that out as much, and obviously we want the benefit to um, be to our department and to our city more so than, than individuals. And with that, we'd answer any questions if you have any. Matt? You said when they work extra jobs, like is that for the city or for It's independent? basically for themselves, but um, they work through these companies that contract for extra jobs for officers, <clears throat> and these companies don't necessarily need current um, police officers, they just need people that are AZ post qualified. And so there's a requirement of 48 hours for the city every quarter, is there a requirement balance out the extra jobs or is that just? That's, that's gonna be up to the individual. Okay. They're, they're no longer, um, <coughs> council, they're, they're no longer our employees, so it's kind of hard to dictate what they do. We just want to make sure that we get our, our hours from them and that they maintain their AZ post and that they attend the mandatory training that, that we require of them. Lisa, or Lisa, Donna, I'm sorry. I'm looking Not at Lisa and Lisa wasn't married. <laughs> uh, so a couple questions, Chief, on the training hours that they have to do, if there's cost involved in specific training, um, are we going to be responsible for that, or is it more in-house training? It's all in-house training that okay. they'll have to do. The only cost that, that I can foresee, and Scott, jump in if I'm wrong, if, if you see it's wrong, is, is for the ammunition, for the qualifications. But we will not be doing specialized training for the reserve officers. Um, they will train alongside our officers when we have regularly scheduled mandated in-service training. And then the second question I had, um, when you talked about removal from the program, is there any, going to be any kind of evaluation process at the end of each year, like a written evaluation? Yes, we, and we talked about that. We're not going to, we're not going to, it's basically a pass-fail um, where the, the, the coordinator will write a memo to me stating that this, this officer has met all the requirements that, that we set out, that their AZ post um, training has been done, and how many events that they worked for the city in that year, and it will be basically a pass-fail at that time. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. How many uh, <clears throat> pers personnel that are added, does this help set aside the, the shortages that you've had in the police department from time to time? No, and thank you, Council Powell, for bringing that up because that is one important thing I wanted to bring up. This is not going to be used to keep us from coming to the city council and the city for more people. This, um, they, they will not be answering calls in the street. They won't be in a car by themselves um, answering calls for service. Their job will be in-house. Uh, assisting and relieving some of our people from uh, some of the tasks that they're that they are given right now to, that keeps them away from what I would consider their primary function. Good, thank you, Matt. Sorry, one more. Um, I thought it was neat you said about because when you came to us a couple of years ago and you saw the shortage coming, and I appreciate that. And this is a good way to help that. I I, I know it's not going to solve the problem. But also, will they be riding along with like maybe some of the newer officers from time to time? Is that part of the program? I mean, if it dictate if, if it's needed or to kind of help just to share that knowledge maybe or interact I think with them. Oh, sorry. I, I think Councilor Herman, they'll, they'll be exposed to some of the younger officers, but um, we don't plan on using them for 
anything like a field training program or anything okay. like that. We're, we're developing, um, and, and Sergeant Tenno, who will be here tonight, is one of the ones that was, was very um, important in this. We're developing our younger officers as field training, or our officers as field train officers as the first step towards um, their ability to be supervisors in the upcoming year. So um, we, don't, we don't have any plans of using them, uh, the reserve officers on the street at all, unless it would be for like a city event, like a parade, 4th of July or something where we currently might use our volunteers or use a, um, a current member of our police department. But we'll have a bigger base to draw from for yes. those, okay. Yeah, and again, to go when you brought that to our attention, it was pretty eye opening. So I'm glad that this is another program that we're starting to benefit us. Bob, I just wanted to make a comment and, and uh, thank you for coming up with this. Um, just an observation on reserve programs: um, the the general public doesn't recognize a, a new officer, an old officer, an experienced one, a part time one. They see a uniformed <laughs> officer and they assume they're fully trained, fully equipped. And that's always one of the challenges with the reserve program. But I, I appreciate you guys uh, squaring that up right off the bat and only taking uh, retiring officers that you, you know what their capabilities are. So I, I love it. Sounds great. Lisa? And I was going to piggyback on that. Of course, you know, it's so nice to take advantage of the, you know, skilled, you know, um, community members here. And we have people that, that have had this background. And so, I mean, it's great. And, and Lieutenant Sherman, I'm, I'm happy to hear that you're going to coordinate it. I mean, I would imagine that's going to be tough. I mean, you have a strong volunteer program already as it is, but I can see how this would be to your advantage because they're actual officers that have had years of experience. But I wanted to see if you have, have, have feelers out there to, to see how many people you think you'll get right off the bat. Have you been talking to some people and any idea what you're gonna start with? They've actually been talking to me. <laughs> um, there's a strong interest okay. in this. Um, I do know the first, um, four out of the first five that are scheduled to retire, I know will be in this program. Oh. And the only okay. reason the other one isn't is that she's moving out of state. So there, there is a very strong interest in, in this program. Great. No, I think it's great, too. Donna? I just, I just want to make a comment that I'm, I'm really happy to see that you're limiting to just cast grant officers only. And I sit, and I think I mentioned, I sit on the um, committee at Arizona League of Cities and Towns, and this is one of the topics that have come up. And there was a number of officers from other uh, communities that sits on this um, that are now on council and they felt that it would help with shortages and I did not want that to happen and that's why I, at the committee meeting I voted no because I think that we need to be very uh, respectful of the fact that the officers need to make sure that you know we have jobs when we need jobs and and there's a place for people that are retired so I'm really happy about the fact that you're being very selective on this and you're not taking outside from other communities because we need people that know Casa Grande and will do that. So I'm, I'm really excited about it. Anyone else? Thank, Thank you, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, Larry, do you want to introduce the next one? Mr. Mayor, members of the council, I'll actually start the presentation, and um, and obviously we've asked our partners, uh, Arizona Water Company uh, representatives, to assist with this particular dialogue this evening. I, I do want council to know that there is a corresponding item that you'll be considering during the regular council meeting, item K2, but because of the length of the presentation and some of the complexities, I felt it was important for us to uh, hold this particular discussion in a study session format. And since Chief um, McCrory was so expeditious in his presentation, they're even yielding an additional 15 minutes to us, right? Thank you, Chief, for that, by the way. But uh, I am happy to uh, introduce our partners uh, from Arizona Water Company. We have Fred Schneider and Terry Sue Rossi, who will be presenting with me this evening on the Copper Mountain Ranch uh, project and and I I know the council is aware of the fact that staff and has been working very closely with Arizona Water 
on a water resources plan, and it has really um, yielded a number of positive benefits to this point. And, I, and, and the council has heard in the past uh, the demand management system that's been implemented. We're working on other, uh, other water supply policies that Marin Council will be considering as well, such as our effluent allocation policy that will be coming before the council. But as Casa Grande continues to grow, we uh, actually, as a byproduct of this water resources planning effort, uh, had a discussion with Arizona Water about the potential of about potential options that would would open the Copper Mountain Ranch development for potential de for potential development opportunities, and and so we've we've really been working on this. The mayor's been actively involved with this as well. He's had several discussions with the director of uh, water resources uh, along the way. And, and really tonight is just what I would consider to be just an overview of the path that we're traveling. Uh, the, the council action that you'll take later on during the regular council meeting is really the policy decision. Uh, staff asking the mayor and council to support the direction that we're traveling in this, in this partnership. But I, I do need to, number one, express a, a sincere amount of thanks to both Fred and Terry Sue. Uh, for their technical expertise and really just what I consider to be brainstorming uh, and and as we as we've evaluated the potential options of um, this of, of this solution for Copper Mountain Ranch I'm going to start uh, really uh, Mr. Mayor and members of the council by giving a little bit of an overview of what we're going to be talking about tonight and just summarizing a bit of the development. It's been a number of years since this council, since any council has heard much on Copper Mountain Ranch. Well, 2006, I think, would have been the last time that there was any dialogue. Um, we do have Mr. Larry Yount, who is actually a property owner in that area as well here tonight. Is, and so uh, I guess I would say that, at least in my opinion, this is a, a policy topic that we have to work very collaboratively with with the with the various entities that that are looking for solutions in this area and so as far as the agenda tonight I've talked a little bit about the background information uh, I am going to uh, be handing off the microphone to the folks from Arizona water to talk about water resources and water infrastructure and a bit of the next steps and then we'll close obviously we want the mayor and council to have the opportunity to ask any questions that you might have uh, this evening as well um, so copper mountain ranch uh, I, I think all of you are very familiar with the location of this particular development uh, it actually originated in the 80s and the 90s where the Marin council and the and the then developer uh, actually planned a master plan community, uh, which is, is actually east of Pinal Avenue in the Sacatone Mountains. Uh, it is a it it has always been um, really outlined as by by the development community as 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 a as a premier development not only in Casa Grande but in the state. And so um, what I as as we go through these slides tonight, at least the ones that I'm presenting, I want to make sure that the council is fully aware that. Uh, the solutions that we're looking at today are really focused in the area of our Copper Mountain Ranch Water Company and the designation that we have there. And we've got some slides that I think will depict that a little more uh, thoroughly for everybody. But our ultimate plan is, as we're looking through the pathway for development in this area, that we find solutions that will benefit the entire northern boundary of, of our community. So what you'll see on the map here, uh, Mr. Mayor and members of the council, is actually the original development uh, that, was, that was brought to the Marin Council in the, in the 80s and 90s. And I think many of you are aware of the fact that we did at that point in time, uh, concurrently with the development plan, actually create a community facilities district. And, and really the primary intention of that community facilities district at the time that it was formed uh, as all of you know, the CFD statute actually uh, is utilized to build enhanced communities, but there was definitely a major emphasis on water at that point in time. Uh, and so what you see here is the portion, in what I would consider in the lavender um, or purplish color there, you'll see the, the original boundaries of the, of the development and the community facilities district as it was formed in 2000. 
in 2002, and, and I know that uh, I believe Mr. Powell is, is, was on the council at that point in time. It's, it's right about the time that I arrived in the organization. Um, Mr. Huddleston was the chief of police, and so there's still a little bit of, of, of knowledge of this time. But uh, ultimately, the city acquired the Mohawk Anderson Water Companies, two water companies that were privately run at that point in time. Uh, the city actually acquired those. Uh, there are two, approximately 250 customers, active customers, that, that we still provide uh, water to today. And, and so when the mayor and council is, are establishing rates and the like, it's really for this particular uh, area that is highlighted in the yellow there. Again, the overall vision at that point in time was that there would be uh, some type of a strategy and a plan that would be developed to actually utilize the designation or the, the, the water company to ultimately uh, provide services to this to this northern area of our community. And so in uh, 2002, shortly after the acquisition, the, the area became a member services area. Uh, we had applied through the uh, Arizona Department of Water Resources for a designation. Uh, that designation was granted for and actually uh, awarded, uh, the, the city was awarded, or the CFD was awarded approximately 4,113 acre feet of, of uh, uh, acre feet based on groundwater physical availability in the vicinity of the Mohawk Anderson Company at the time. And this is really just, the, again, the designation. And so you'll see that our designation is, and it's the cross hacks section now of the map, you ultimately see the area of the Mohawk Anderson as well as the as the community, Copper Mountain Ranch Community Facilities District. And so the city still has that designation today. Um, we've It's something that we've maintained. We've paid into the GRD uh, as well along, along these many years. Uh, again, just providing services to those roughly 250, um, to those 250 active customers. Uh, concurrent with uh, the concurrent with the designation, uh, the council there was a council policy to actually transfer those assets to the city at that point, and and that actually happened uh, hand in hand um, from uh, the a transfer of, from the community facilities district to the city of Casa Grande, and the council did that in uh, 2003. In 2006, we, uh, as, as the council can recall, the, the housing boom was in full swing at that point in time, and the property uh, that was once identified as Copper Mountain Ranch had been assembled along with other property owners to the south. And so now you begin to, uh, you begin to see the pink, the addition of the pink area there. The mayor and council did agree, and the community facilities district board did agree to expand those boundaries. And uh, at that particular time, there was, uh, there was a new master plan that was being contemplated that really was focused on uh, residential housing and a resort lifestyle uh, in that area there. I, I just want to point out through this map again that the, the area that is in pink is currently not, does not, is not covered in the designation. The city did make application to expand the designation of, of the assured water supply into the pink area, but that particular application is still pending, obviously in ADWR based on some of the water modeling issues that we've faced in the Pinal AMA. Most recently with the, uh, well, and I guess I would say this um, as well, so roughly uh, 2008, we saw the downturn in the economy and, and the situations that the nation and certainly Arizona and Casa Grande faced with the housing market. And that essentially put, uh, really slowed down any of the planning of this particular area um, and, and within the city entirely, in fact. And, and, and so with the, with the recent activities that have transpired in the housing market in general in Arizona and Pinal County and, and within our community, um, we have had some interest by the new owners of this. This since since 2006, there's these these various parcels have really been parceled off into four owners, and uh, the Rise Development Group, as you can see, we've got the box there, approached the city uh, and had had talked about the potential of a partnership with the city uh, and Arizona Water and their organization, their development uh, organization to try to come uh, up with some type of options to, uh, to essentially utilize the city's designation, potentially partnering with Arizona Water 
to uh, to provide the physical water, and they they actually the Rise Group building some level of infrastructure in this particular area. Uh, uh, developing water infrastructure in this particular area uh, to really begin to spawn that there there are a number of there are a number of elements that have to be met in order for something like that to transpire and we're going to talk a little more about that here in the few uh, here in, in the next few minutes but but ultimately as I said early on at least in my mind and I think I think the the partners that we've got around the table will agree that this is going to have to be a collective effort with with the other property owners in this area we need we need to develop a vision that ultimately gets executed very concisely with the with the help of of every everybody who stands to gain in this particular uh development and so in uh as i mentioned earlier in roughly in december 2020 uh, our discussion with arizona water really commenced and and we and we really felt like there were some opportunities for us to at least vet with the Arizona Department of Water Resources some of that has been transpiring uh, the the hope was that we ultimately would be able to have what I would consider to be a very solid solution um, by this time but um, with just everything and the activity that are going on and the 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 the, the various um, <coughs> Uh, challenges that we're faced with the with the Pinal AMA and the modeling. Ultimately, we find ourselves in a position where we're asking council to consider this memorandum of cooperation tonight with Arizona Water in advance of really having what I consider to be clear direction from the state uh, Arizona Department of Water Resources. But but we have been uh, very engaged with that group. They've been very cooperative in meeting with us, and so I'm I'm feeling very. Uh, Positive, and I believe that there will be some opportunities to move this thing forward here uh, in the near term. This is just a timeline, essentially what I just articulated in, in narrative format, so I'm not going to really go uh, much more into this. I'm going to let uh, both Fred and Terry Sue talk a little more about it. It does talk about what I would consider to be our phased approach to this. To this solution again uh, we see that it, there's there will be incremental in, incremental steps that will actually transpire uh, as we as we provide services or find a solution for the entire northern uh, part of our community but ultimately we see that it's something that can can potentially be done here in the very near term the group did and i did express this in my request for council action item this evening the, the group did establish a set of object, objectives that i think are very important for the mayor and council to consider tonight i'm not going to read these in order but ultimately what you'll find is that uh, just in summary before i before i hand off the the advancer here that that um, we see this as uh, as a potential option for us to continuing the development in Casa Grande to develop a, a development that we think will be a premier development within our community. Certainly one that as we continue to attract new jobs and, and uh, the manufacturing industry into the community, we're going to need places for people to live. And, and I don't think it's, I, I know many of you have articulated the fact that at least in your opinion, you would like to see um, not only the, the employees living in Casa Grande, but all the way to the executives. And we hope that if with a quality development that we can begin to see that transition begin to take place with the diversity of housing stock and uh, at least just some of what I would consider to be the initial visions that have been articulated along the way with this development. Mm -hmm. At, at least in my opinion, I think staff's opinion, everyone would agree that, that this could really open the door to, to, to bringing what we consider to be uh, a, a, a diversity of housing stock as well as uh, potential of other commercial and, and resort, potential resort types of solutions to, to, our to our fine community. But we want to do that obviously in an affordable manner. I don't think uh, I'll just say this, that I don't think that there's any one of the groups that becomes a partner in this when it's all said and done can, that could do it on their own. I don't feel that the city could do it on our own. It's something that we're going to need assistance with uh, on the technical side and with the with the with potentially with, you know, with Arizona water from a physical water, potentially from a physical water perspective, as as well as with the development community that is going to be developing in that area. And so with that, I believe I'm handing the advancer to Terry Sue, who's going to talk a little bit about the water resources component of that. This makes it to the front. The 
Good evening. Um, my name is Terry Surasi, and I'm the Water Resources Manager for Arizona Water Company, and it's my pleasure to be before you tonight to talk about a premier development for your community. Um, our, our job is to help the communities that we serve create their dreams. All we really do is just add water to the situation. And um, this is an, indeed a very exciting development. So I'm going to just talk a little bit about how we're expecting to provide a sustainable water supply to the area. And I'm going to begin with a guiding principle that we developed. So the city and the county actually and Arizona Water Company jointly went to a growing water smart workshop in uh, uh, February of 2020. And while we were there, we developed this guiding principle that we use in really all of the work that we're doing relative to the water resource plan. In fact, we showed you this same guiding principle when we came and talked about the demand management program. And I'm just going to read it because I, I want to get in the habit of doing that every time we meet to talk about these issues. It's, that's how important this is to us. So our community, farms, and businesses need water to thrive, and we risk becoming too dependent on groundwater but we maintained our agricultural economy on Colorado River water, meaning CAP water, and we grew our communities on groundwater, both of which are expected to decline. Therefore, in order to protect our quality of life, help meet future water needs, and grow our economy, we need to do these three things, reduce our reliance on groundwater, invest in sustainable water supplies, and use the water we have more efficiently. So part of this, uh, part of the importance of this guiding principle was really tied to the general land use plan that you all just ended up uh, adopting. And so within the general uh, land use plan, as you know, there are these specific water resource goals. And we, we were very involved with the city in helping to develop these. And so the four goals are implementing the water conservation measures to reduce the outdoor water use. And we came to you with the demand management program. I be, believe last November we talked about it and then we've implemented it in April. It's going wonderfully. Um, and then another goal was to reduce the total water use, the per capita water use in the, in the city of Casa Grande by 15% from 2020 levels. And the total, again, I'll show you that in a minute actually. And then another goal is the maximum, to maximize the use of effluent as an alternative to groundwater where that's appropriate. And then the fourth goal is to develop additional water supplies to reduce the dependency on groundwater. And uh, uh, Mayor, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think really Copper Mountain Ranch is really the first subdivision that would be coming, or community that would be coming up through the current general land use plan. And so they've been working very hard to try to comply with all of the goals that you see uh, in the general land use plan. So just a little background. So this is, uh, this is out of the general land use plan. So this is our, uh, the projected growth in terms of population and water demand, so today, the demand is about 15, 16,000 acre feet and about 70,000 people. And by 2050, according to the general land use plan, our demand would be about 30,000 acre feet and we'd be serving about 140,000 people. In terms of uh, per capita water use, because you might recall that the, the standard is to reduce our per capita water use by 15%. So today, the per capita water use, the total per capita water use is 198. The residential per capita water use is 96 if you include HOAs and 85, I believe that, or is that 88? 88. I can't remember if I was reading that. If you uh, don't include the HOAs, my vision is just not quite good enough for that. <laughs> um, and so, uh, whoops, it seems like I'm missing something. No, nope, that's, uh, I guess, the next slide. So now let's talk a little bit about the specific water resource plan for Copper Mountain Ranch that's consistent with the general land use plan. So there's three elements, and these line up with those three objectives we talked about earlier that are in the guiding principles. So we've got a demand management program, 100% reuse of reclaimed water, and securing additional water supplies. From an assured water supply perspective, and Larry was uh, briefly mentioning this, is that we're going to rely on the designation of assured water supply based on the physical availability that is out at the Anderson Mohawk groundwater ranch. And we have done some hydrologic modeling out there, and the water supplies look really good out there. So that was, I think, a, a great uh, purchase on the part of the city a number of years ago, and that will serve this development well. In terms of the demand management program, conservation is the foundation of Copper Mountain Ranch. They are in the process of revising their plan as we speak, their master plan, to be completely consistent with the general land use plan. So they've actually pulled out a lot of the high water use elements, including I think the golf course is no longer a part of that, if, if that's just correct, Larry. 
So they've, they've eliminated a golf course from that. So they've worked pretty hard to make sure that it's in compliance with the general land use plan. Um, the reduction, if we did a 15% reduction in the current gallons per capita per day rate, it would be 168. And the uh, Copper Mountain Ranch right now, as it's designed in the current, in, in the newer form, it would be less than 140 gallons per capita per day. So that's even more than what we would expect. It's about a 30% reduction from the current levels. So they're working really hard to be as efficient as possible. The demand management program, as you know, is the, uh, the one that we just recently implemented. And so the Copper Mountain Ranch system would become a part of that existing program. And so that includes, obviously, the general land use plan elements. It includes the existing ordinances the city has already in place for low water use landscaping and other uh, water wasting ordinances and that kind of thing. We also have a customer high water use inquiry resolution and notification process. We have conservation oriented rate structures. We have leak detection and repair. We have a meter replacement program. And we also have the Save at Casa Grande program. And that's the program that we launched in, in April. And I just want to make a plug for that. And so if, if you have not liked our page, if you have not um, checked us out on Facebook or on Instagram, please do. Uh, we'd love for you to, to follow the, Cas uh, the Save at Casa Grande program. And then we also have the WaterWise Outside program, which we are in the process of implementing now. And we're working with your Parks and Rec staff to, uh, uh, to focus on several of the different parks. And I think one of the areas is actually City Hall as well to figure out how to, to use water more efficiently on those high water use areas. As far as the water supply plan is concerned, and Larry alluded to this as well, is that they're kind of two different plans moving in, uh, in, in uh, concert. One is, to, is for Arizona Water Company to begin by providing water to Copper Mountain Ranch. And uh, um, my boss, Fred, will be standing up in a minute and kind of describing how the infrastructure works, which will make it more obvious as to why we're doing this. And so we would be providing a combination of groundwater and recovered CAP water and potentially recovered reclaimed water. And then, in the, uh, and then at some point when the Anderson Mohawk uh, groundwater ranch is connected in, from an infrastructure perspective to either to our system or to Copper Mountain Ranch itself, then, then the city of Casa Grande would be providing the water directly with that groundwater ranch water and with reclaimed water produced at Copper Mountain Ranch and other renewable water supplies. Um, and so the city will be the water provider even when Arizona Water Company is providing water. So Arizona Water Company will provide water to the city and then the city will serve the water to the Copper Mountain Ranch area. And this will be done within the context, the initial water supply that Arizona Water Company will provide will be done through a water supply agreement. And you'll be seeing more of this as time goes on. And these are some elements of it. So the parties will be the city and Arizona Water Company. The sources of water will be water from Arizona Water Company's water system. Types of water, again, are, are groundwater, recovered CAP water, and recovered reclaimed water. There'll be points of delivery that will be agreed to on the eastern end of the property near Pinal uh, Avenue. And then, um, and then everything will be master metered. So at each point of delivery, we'll know exactly how much water we're delivering to the city's water system. And then the effective date of the agreement will be starting when water service has been established uh, until the groundwater ranch has provided the backup or the final supply. And even after the Anderson Mohawk groundwater is brought to bear, Arizona Water Company will continue to serve as a backup and redundant supply going on into the future. Some other basic terms of the agreement include that the rates will be established based on a cost of service study. We'll obviously meet all water quality standards. Uh, we're going to be relying on the designation of assured water supply, so the city will need to maintain that in good standing. And the parties will cooperate on all permits that we need, would need to acquire and in any, any annual reporting. And I think that's it for the water resource piece. And I'm going to turn it over to Fred to talk about the infrastructure. Well, good evening. Uh, I'm Fred Schneider. I'm president of Arizona Water Company. I want to say thank you very much for having me here this evening, and I appreciate uh, everybody providing us the opportunity to 
uh, present our thoughts on Copper Mountain Ranch, and I really appreciate the partnership and the relationship that we have with the city of Costa Grande. I know I've said it before, but I firmly believe it that we are much stronger and much smarter when we work together. Um, and I believe that you'll see this evening in the presentation that that is just uh, what we've done here. So kind of a pick up where uh, kind of Larry was in looking for a, a path forward. So with the city's designation and our water system being adjacent to the actual project for Copper Mountain Ranch, it provided us a really a great opportunity to leverage the city's designation, which allowed the development to move forward with an assured water supply. And then you also use and leverage our water system that we have, which is, as you can see on the map, the blue lines were actually adjacent to and contiguous to the Copper Mountain Ranch uh, development. And most importantly, we are uh, probably right next door in the close proximity of the first phase of Copper Mountain Ranch that Rise Development wants to do, which is also the farthest point away from the Anderson Mohawk water system. So it really creates a great opportunity and a great partnership here. So it kind of explain how the process uh, as we envision will go forward. Um, so the city of Costa Grande uh, will be able to approve um, the plats and the project uh, under its designation. That's the allowance for the assured water supply for the plats to get recorded. Um, Arizona Water Company and RISE are working on infrastructure uh, as we speak so that we can provide water service from our system to the Copper Mountain Ranch and the city's water system to get the project up and going uh, for a period of time uh, to get the value of Copper Mountain Ranch large enough to where it can help fund some of that infrastructure that's needed to get water from the Anderson Mohawk system over to the Copper Mountain Ranch part of the system. Once that is done um, and there, there's the financial ability, uh, then we're, we'll work with the city of Costa Grande to uh, drill additional wells, build the infrastructure and the pipelines uh, to, wheel wa to convey water from Anderson Mohawk uh, probably somewhere along down Courtson to the Desert Carmel area. That is the far west end of our water system. Thereby, we can wheel it through our system and deliver it to Copper Mountain Ranch, uh, just as we had planned in the interim. And then that infrastructure will continue to develop until the project kind of reaches a build out and we're conveying all the water that's needed. So some of the key infrastructure we plan to use to serve Copper Mountain Ranch uh, we have what we call here the Scott Drive storage tank and booster station. Uh, it's off of Scott Drive, just north of Val Vista, just south of Hopi. It's about 5 million gallons of storage there. We have the ability to expand that. Uh, we have ability to move about 20 million gallons of water a day through our system. So we have quite a bit of capacity and ability to move water. Some additional assets that we have uh, available to us. We've installed about 12,000 linear feet of 24-inch water main down McCartney, and that's from Tucker to Weaver Roads, and that's the water line that went under I-10, so we're able to move water from the east side of I-10 to the west side of I-10, which also helps move water over to Copper Mountain Ranch. With that, we bought a five-acre parcel of uh, property off of Overfield, about two and a half miles north of Florence Boulevard, and that's the main purpose is to take that water, that part of the water system convey that water west towards the main part of Casa Grande. More specifically here, we bought a 15-acre parcel for two wells, which is on the uh, what northwest corner of Early and I-10, um, right uh, across from uh, Mission Royale on the uh, west side of I-10. And that, in, that plan is for a regional storage tank, pump station, and a well field that will move water from that area into Casa Grande. Um, and we're currently working with RISE development to uh, drill two additional wells just north of that site, specifically because we bought that piece of property off of Evans and those two wells, uh, one's been drilled, we're doing some uh, evaluation of it and the second well is under construction. So I'll give you a little map of where those are at. So the piece of property on the corner of Early and I-10 with the two the blue triangles, which says AWC wells, that is our two planned wells on that site, and that'll be a regional storage tank booster station facility. And then the two red triangles, which says RISE development, 
That's the two wells they've acquired the property for and are currently drilling and developing those wells. And that is intended to be the water supply to get Copper Mount Ranch started. Um, some ideas that we have of conveying water from Anderson Mohawk, uh, the city system uh, into our system and then north into Copper Mountain Ranch. Um, and, and there's a, I wouldn't say all these are needed. These are just some ideas we have of moving water. Uh, we kind of have the southern pipeline route, which is probably our preferred route. The southern area of the Anderson Mohawk system has the best water quantity um, and probably the best ability to move water. It's also the closest to our system, so we could phase that pipeline over a period of time as additional supplies are needed. Um, we also have a northern route. We could move water from the northern part of the system into Copper Mountain Ranch. That one's looking to be a little bit longer uh, to construct lengthwise. And then we have you know, possibly a pipeline between the north and south of Anderson Mohawk, which is the western connection. And then we have some pipelines we plan to construct, which is right around the eastern connector, which moves water from the main part of our system, which is Burgess Peak, to Scott Drive. So that's kind of our thought of how we'd move water from Anderson Mohawk into our system and up to Copper Mountain Ranch. So with that, I'll turn it over to Larry to talk about the schedule and some of the next steps, and then answer any questions. Thank you. Thanks, Fred. Thank you, Fred. And Terry Sue, thank you as well. And so I guess before I get into the schedule, I, it's, it's probably abundantly clear to the council at this point that there's a number of elements that really are still need to be worked out on on this particular concept. I'll, I'll refer to it as a concept. We've, we've spent a lot of resources and time bring, bringing it to a point that we could present to the mayor and council this evening. But there are a number of there are a number of steps that are still actually necessary, and um, and so ultimately what you'll see is that we're again we'll start with the June 21st date that we're asking the mayor and council uh, this evening to consider the memorandum of cooperation, and I talk a little bit about that in the request for council action that the mayor and council will be considering later on this evening. Again, I, I think that the, uh, the the mayor and council will, would agree that that you'll see that it's it's really written as a framework document. It, it really is just a, 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 a an understanding that Arizona, Arizona Water Company and the city of, Cas city of Cascrown are going to work hand in hand to to ultimately come up with uh, alternatives, uh, knowing that we've got a development community that are going to have to actively engage as well. But uh, um, I, I I also believe that. The, the show of force with our two entities working hand in hand just gives the development community a little clearer uh, uh, confidence and vision that 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 they that we're ultimately on the same page as with moving forward to, to uh, resolve the issues that uh, may, may may be presented to them today. Um, oh, sorry about that. So ultimately, uh, if uh, once the once the uh, memorandum of cooperation is considered and if approved, then we would be moving forward with a water supply agreement. And I know that Terry Sue talked just very briefly about that. We we have not shared that with the mayor and council. We're still look, working on it from a draft perspective. But I think the message that I want to share this evening is that the mayor and council can. Um, essentially anticipate that there'll be several agreements as we begin to navigate this course, there'll be several several different agreements that ultimately will uh, shore up the partnership and, and really what I consider to be uh, provide the, the pathway um, as, as we work hand in hand in, in solving this and in, in, in opening this up for development. Uh, if, if those things are finalized, we believe that the development community can ultimately begin to do uh, begin some planning and perhaps even platting as early as January of 2022. We think time is somewhat of the essence at this point in time, um, and so um, ultimately we would hope that uh, that we could meet those thresholds. Prior to that, we we would envision that that the mayor and council would be considering a, an operation and maintenance agreement. Uh, I know that in the presentation, both Terry Sue and Mr. Snyder actually talked about 
uh, about us utilizing some of their system to potentially be to will the water up into the Copper Mountain Ranch. We've even broadened that up a little bit broader to, in fact, talk about the potential of them essentially becoming our water department of some sort, where where there's a maintenance agreement and well, where they're handling the maintenance and the operations of the system. And and so again, just another agreement that we would be uh, bringing before council to consider. If, if things go well, then we anticipate that maybe as early as uh, May of 2022 that that uh, development could potentially begin in that area uh, of the eastern area of the of the development. Uh, and ultimately, as, as these things are transpiring, we would envision a plan that would allow us to begin to start to have discussions about broadening the additional infrastructure that's been discussed tonight, the, the additional wells and the like, as well as uh, per perhaps finding the solutions to expand, um, to, to perhaps have ADWR consider the expansion of our designation and or to find other alternatives that would potentially open up the development south or, or in that pink box area, I guess, is how I'd refer to it that, in the map that I'd showed, shown before. And, um, and I guess, uh, Mayor and members of the council, I would just close by indicating that uh, there's, as I said just a minute ago, there's a lot of work that's been done, but there's certainly a lot more that needs to be done. I, I personally believe that uh, working together with Arizona Water in this case shows the, shows the collective efforts uh, to the development community, and I believe that that will uh, perhaps uh, stimulate their interest in getting uh, on on this uh, wagon to ultimately for resolve uh, in this particular area of our community. The the as I said, the memorandum is 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 somewhat specific from a policy perspective to the mayor and council to essentially agree that this is something that this council would would want to prioritize and for staff to allocate their resources on. And so with that, if you've got any questions of me and or if you've got any questions of, of the folks from Arizona Water on the technical side, we'd be happy to entertain them. Jeff, you have a question? Yeah, uh, I wish I'd have paid better attention to science, Larry, but groundwater versus uh, the Colorado River. I understand Colorado River is a drought because of lack of rain and snow melt. Where does groundwater generate from? And is it going down at the same levels? <laughs> so the groundwater generally is, um, was formed many, many centuries ago when there was a time when there was, um, the ice age came down and they developed these supply sources underground. They are naturally replenished by uh, runoff that we have through rain and coming down at the mountains and that kind of thing. But groundwater is not, it's not a renewable water supply like say the Colorado River is where it's collecting um, runoff from an entire watershed and it's concentrated into the river and comes down. So groundwater, is, when we prove up groundwater as a water supply, what we have to do is we have to find a volume that's large enough to serve 100 years because it's the replenishment is very slow and it's uh, not as significant. So when the city got its designation of assured water supply, it sought, uh, it, when we say it's 4,000 acre feet a year, it's actually 4 million acre feet of water that's stored there. So that's how we make groundwater a reliable supply. And um, Fred and I were actually talking on the phone about the difference between a sustainable supply and a reliable water supply. And, a sustainable water supply is considered usually to be a renewable water supply like the Colorado River. But the uh, Colorado River has a, um, s a somewhat unreliable, at least we're finding it to be at this time, to be less reliable than what we've expected in the past. Whereas groundwater tends to be very reliable because we're pumping it from the ground. It's not affected by the hydrology in the area. What you really want to do is create a balance between those two things. And so that's what we're, we're proposing with Copper Mountain Ranch. So I think I heard you just say that the groundwater supply for Copper Mountain is good for 100 years, correct? Yes. Okay. The other question I had, uh, you might understand that people in Copper Mountain are going to get billed by the city for the water, and the rest of the city is going to be billed by Arizona Water Company. We're going to have a dual system. Is that correct? No. Mr. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, Councilmember Lavender, I, I tonight I I cannot specifically answer 
exactly where their bill is going to be coming from. I know that we've had dialogue with Arizona Water about the potential of billing along the way. Uh, they are obviously governed through the Corporation Commission and are going right. to have certain requirements that they have to meet. But ultimately, I think the important message that I want to send is that um, this is the city's designation that we're ultimately going to be using in this. And there is a there is a probability that they would be getting billed from the city of Casa Grande as well. Is that, is that fair? Yeah. But we won't see something like Johnson Ranch or, or the utilities have been a real concern out there with runaway costs. They'll be balanced through citizens on both sides, correct? The, 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 the short answer is yes. Um, and obviously, the, the, uh, any type of a billing question or a rate question that would transpire, uh, it, at least in, in this particular area, if the city, the city would be establishing the rate, that would be something that the, there is a formal process that is outlined by state statute that requires uh, citizen involvement in establishing those rates. The mayor and council would ultimately have the final say in those, uh, but we would be following the statutes as, as we work through the various costs uh, and, and analyses to determine what that rate might be. Thank you. Do you want to come teach science for yeah. some of our kids? <laughs> you explain it so well. Thank you. Mr. Powell. <clears throat> Curious on the, uh, the viability of Anderson Mohawk. Does the Sacatone shelf come under them where they are? Are they limited in hydrology or are they okay? Um, so we've done a number of, uh, of hydrologic studies on Anderson Mohawk and uh, this, uh, the, the CFD, I guess, uh, or the city at the time or in cooperation, y'all did a lot of hydrologic studies at that time. The Anderson Mohawk is a considerable distance from the Sacaton Mountains and so okay. the aquifer um, or the bedrock is pretty shallow by the Sacaton Mountains but. as I, I know that you would, you would appreciate that. But it, it slopes down pretty quickly and, and gets to where there's some pretty decent uh, alluvial, um, an alluvial area where the pumping is pretty pretty good actually, and we've done some recent look looking at uh, the Anderson Mohawk area, and uh, we we feel that that area is really good from a transmissivity perspective, meaning that we can draw the water out pretty easily, and that the volume of water is um, is there. Another benefit of the Anderson Mohawk area is that it's also um, a, a lot of that area is within the Maricopa Stanfield Irrigation District, which is a groundwater savings facility. And so we can deliver water to the groundwater savings facility and recover it within Anderson Mohawk. So that's an added benefit in addition to uh, the groundwater supply that's available. But yes, we, we believe that the groundwater supply is sufficient based on what we see. Thank you. Thank you, Terry Sue. Matt? We had a few things. Um, and this is probably, I think, one of the things that would be farther down the road, but the infrastructure in Copper Mountain Ranch would be done by the CFD, correct? That's the plan right now. Mr. Mayor, Council Member Herman, uh, it's, I would envision that it would be done through a combination of development, development uh, uh, infrastructure as well as through the CFD. Okay. And again, that, what we're doing is a structure tonight, so we'll hammer out all those details as right. we get closer. And, and I think the important thing here, or a neat thing here, is that Copper Mountain Ranch is going to be the new gateway and that's one of our our goals is to make nice gateways into town and this is a good place for it right when you get off the freeway and a couple other things i heard that i liked was you know mr schneider said i like it when we work together and so do we because it's been a long time before you got here but it's, it's been very good lately so we appreciate that and um and i like how larry threw in at the end that you know it'd be great if you served and maintained our infrastructure at our water company so just remember that that was a good one Larry. <laughs> like how you snuck it in but you know and, and starting it at a development like this with with the aspirational type housing you know because we're doing a lot of workforce stuff now but this would be more of an aspirational type development for people to move up to or to attract those higher end buyers that we're losing to the valley now especially you know the executives in these companies so this is a great way to do it and with the demand management program front loaded on this it meets all of our goals and it'll be the the rule rather than the exception in this development so I, I just like how everything's kind of working together with the developers Arizona Water and us and making you know a great entryway and a great premier development in Casa Grande so I hope it works out very well Lisa 
I agree. Um, but I know, you know, when we look at what we're actually going to be voting on, the memorandum of cooperation, and of course this is something that, I mean, it's so exciting to see us moving forward, and the timing is, is you know, is perfect here. But it looks, I mean, we do have a long road ahead, it looks like, Larry. Yes. And when you, le when you look at the memorandum, you know, it talks about, you know, the need to prepare and formally consider various um, long-term, you know, maintenance infrastructure supply agreements. So it looks like this is just kind of a starting point to yep. say, hey, we're going to cooperate, work together, and then kind of work through different things that are come our way to make sure that we can move forward um, together on this. So, um, but no, I, I'm, I'm excited. Mayor, I know you've been working on this a lot with um, Larry, but no, I think it, it, it's, it's a great project and something that I know the community is going to be really excited. I know they're going to be ready for it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You know, they're going to think they can buy a house tomorrow, but um, we have to be patient. But I think that's, it's a pretty aggressive timeline, um, but, you know, hopefully we can meet that timeline. But it, it would be great if, if by next year, um, you know, we can, we can move forward a little bit. But it did start 20 years ago, too. So. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Mr. But I think it's going to be oh, important to, to I just make sure people to understand, you know, the, you know, the timing Larry Young, on it. Does this affect, how does this affect your developable land? Is it? in concert with it or is there an issue? Were you done, Lisa? I'm sorry. Yes, I was. Cut you off. Sorry. <laughs> Bob? Yes. Uh, for Larry, I think I, I just need clarification on a couple of things. Um, when we talk about assured water supply, is that certificates that are assigned to Copper Mountain it's, Ranch? It's different. It, it's, it's a good question. And in fact, uh, it's, it's, it's something that we should have probably outlined to the mayor and council early on. The designation program, and, and, and again, I'm going to look to my technical colleagues here. The designation program is is a bit different than the certificate program, right? And so, this entire area here that we've talked about tonight will essentially be managed by the city of Casa Grande. We will be the designated provider, and we will, as the council approves plats, will be responsible for uh, allocating the designation for for the development to take place. Unlike what transpires today with the certificate where if there's a subdivision that takes place, there's another state entity that actually issues those certificates. Okay. And it, is that measurable? When we look at the area of Copper Mountain Ranch, is there X number that, that equates to that? Uh, the, the, Mr. Mayor, Councilmember Huddleston, the, the, uh, my response would be that the, that the acre feet that have been uh, allocated or, and approved in the designation will not provide um, uh, sufficient supply for the entire area of Copper Mountain Ranch. There is additional work that's going to need to be done to, in fact, either expand the designation and we then have control of it and or additional work that would have to be done for it to actually uh, position itself to be in line to receive a certificate as well. But there is additional work, but I think it's important to note that, that this, this, the designation that the city has today would not provide water for the entire development. Okay, and that's kind of where I'm going. I'm trying to visualize how deep we're digging into our bank of, of assured water supply. And tied to that is a, an observation and of course I have to tell a story. Uh, back in the early 90s, I was a young lieutenant and I was handed a, a folder labeled <laughs> Copper Mountain Ranch and, right. and tasked with coming up with a staffing study right. on what this area at build out would require. And I thought we were looking uh, at much more than 10 to 11,000 homes and a, and a population pushing 80,000, I thought. Right. Maybe my memory's a little cloudy, but um, with, with those kind of numbers in mind and the amount of assured water that we, that we have available, that's what I'm trying to reconcile in my mind of, of how, how deep is, is that need. Right. And, and, and so I'm going to ask Fred or Terry Sue to assist me, uh, Councilman Ruddleston, but I, I will start by saying that your memory is, is very accurate. We, oh, we okay. still have that analysis. <laughs> I've got it sitting on my desk. 
and, <laughs> and certainly at the time that that development transpired, the what I would consider to be the um, the parameters within our Pinal AMA uh, with ADWR and, and just water in general general was much different. The the, the rules that were were um, that that were on the books at that point in time are much different than they are today, obviously. Okay. And so uh, the city did in fact go through uh, an analysis for a, a staffing needs analysis and ultimately a level of service analysis to provide services based on that initial master plan. But uh, ultimately what we're talking about here tonight is a scenario where uh, we begin to work very cooperatively with the development community, as Mr. Yount said, perhaps uh, bringing more people into the discussion to look for additional solutions, additional dialogue with Arizona Department of Water Resources. But ultimately what we know that we have the pathway for is, 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 is roughly, is it, what can, is it safe to say somewhere in the 10 to 11,000 home, home range? That's, that's what we're anticipating with our existing designation today. Okay, okay. That helps, thank you. And something that I will add is the, the fourth element that we talked about in the general land use plan and, and part of the, our guiding principle is that we're going to acquire additional water supplies. Supply, right. So you might look at the groundwater as a, um, a feeder supply. That would be the supply that would be used initially, but we would be assessing water resource fees as all the development was occurring from the beginning and that those fees would then be used to go out and acquire additional renewable supplies so that we can keep okay. things moving forward. Well, and if, and if I can as well, Terry Sue, is add the fact that I, I'm in anticipating that effluent will become a, 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 a very um, popular topic as we begin to go down this path, just, just like we're going to hear with additional development. And as I had mentioned to the mayor and council, uh, we do envision bringing back to the mayor and council here in very short order uh, a, a bit of an overview on the effluent uh, analysis that we've been doing as part of as part of our water resources plan, and we anticipate that there will be likely a policy of allocation because effluent will become a very important component of of future development in Cass Grand in the future as well. Okay, so it, it's safe to say. Uh, what we're looking at tonight and what the agreement will likely spell out addresses like a first slice of Copper Mountain Ranch. Just that one. Um, because I, I know that that area is huge. It's kind of deceiving when you look on a map and right. then you go out there and, and step it off. It's huge. Yeah, it's big. Uh, um, but I mean, uh, phase one is big by itself. But I appreciate that. I mean, I, I, I understand. I thought I thought we were speculating that we had enough assured water for the whole thing and and that just it seemed out of out of range to we, me we believe that the pathway to the initial phases of the development that that we we have potential solutions that will get us to to that to that point okay but we ultimately understand that there's a number of other elements that would go into the broader picture for this entire development uh, that obviously the mayor and council will be taking action on, on those, well, you'll be hearing about those uh, potential options in the future as we develop those and, and the like, but it's something that we see that will likely incrementally start and then perhaps with a more uh, uh, grander vision as, as, as the paths become clear. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Well, I just wanna make a comment and uh, say thank you to Arizona Water and thank you all for all the hard work you both have done and your company has done on this. It is appreciated and I think we have a good path forward. I think we have a good plan. Uh, I will say it's been a, been in the works for a while. So uh, hopefully now we can kind of get some direction from ADWR in terms of what they will allow and won't allow us to do. Uh, that'll be the next step, I, I believe. And then, you know, get the developers to back at the table so we can have conversations with them uh, I, I didn't see that on our map, but maybe that might be something you might want to add in terms of, um, of a potential step included in there. So that being said, uh, thank you everybody. We've got about 20 minutes before the city council starts. So if there are no more questions, study session is adjourned.